Hello everyone, welcome to a new series of lecture. In this lecture, we will learn about Apache Beam. Okay, so some of you have uh, built different kind of batch and streaming pipeline. So with the uh, Apache Beam, you can actually easily create both batch and streaming pipeline. So while you are creating an ETL pipeline, you need a source and a sync. So you can actually read from different source like uh, Google Cloud Storage, Kafka, PubSub, and you can write into a different place like BigQuery or Mongo or whatever, right? So Apache Beam is a framework what uh, which, which supports multiple languages. So we can see it here like Python, Java, Go, Scala, SQL, right? And you can actually use different kind of runner. So you can see Flink's runner, Spark runner, Dataflow, Samza, and others are here. But in this series, we will be focusing on Java and Dataflow. So in this series, we will actually uh, write uh, the pipeline using Java language and deploy it into Google Cloud Platform into Dataflow. The goal of this tutorial series is to make very simple application but to focus on Java and Dataflow because I have seen there are actually several examples and tutorial where they actually build the same application and configure it to run for different runner but at the end it becomes so clumsy and I don't like their POM file. Uh, so that's why what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to build a very lean boilerplate code, which is only focused on Java and uh, Dataflow. The sample application will just read a file from a Google Storage and write a file into another Google Storage. And, and the ETL pipeline is gonna run into the Dataflow service in GCP which is built by Java only. I'm gonna use GitHub to store all of my source code. So you will find all of my source code under this repository. Uh, the link is github.com slash crosscut data and the repository name is apache-beam-dataflow. So the way you should browse this repository is like a every key milestone i will put it under a feature branch right now you can see this is the main branch and if you expand it you can see this is actually what my ultimate goal is to actually use a text io to do the read and write so this branch will contain everything up to that and then i will work on another key feature and then that will be a separate branch but the main branch will always contain up-to-date code. So if you want to learn gradually, I would request you to actually go branch by branch because then you will actually have small amount of code change and it would be easy to understand. So before starting to go through the code, we need to actually do some setup. So as a setup, I'm gonna do the code in a Windows 10 machine. So if you are using any other operating system like Linux or Mac, you have to figure out uh, the installation and other configuration for this environment by yourself. So I'm expecting you're gonna have the Java or JDK installed on your machine, which should be at least version 11. You will have Maven. I'm going to use version number 3.6.3. .3. You can use this one on later. I'm going to use the ID Eclipse, but feel free to use other ID like IntelliJ or NetBeans or whatever you want to use. We're going to use GitHub Desktop, which we will use to actually clone the repository and maintain the code. And at the end, we will also install G Cloud CLI, which is gonna be the tool to interact with the Google Cloud from our local machine. Here, Google Cloud Platform. 
We will activate some of the services that we will use to run the pipeline. We will also install Google Cloud CLI which will help us to communicate with GCP from our local machine. Okay, so at first we're going to create an account into the Google Cloud platform. For that, we're going to visit this link, this console.cloud.google.com. So you can use your Gmail account if you have one then it is easy to use a Gmail account or if you don't have a Gmail account if you have a different email address you can also use that account too but for that we have to create a Google account to use that email address so I'm gonna use my personal email address so for that I'm gonna create an account first so to create that account I'm gonna click on this create account and then click on for my personal use I'll put my name and I'm going to use my email address and I'll pick a password. I'll click next and I will get a uh, verification code in my email address I will check the code from my email address copy and paste it do the next I don't need the phone number you can put any date and then I'll go next so it's showing some privacy and terms and stuff I'll just agree on it and there you go my account got created and I'm get, I got into the Google Cloud console which is the platform okay so my account got created now I'm gonna keep my country as Canada I'll select the terms and service I don't need email updates and click on agree and continue okay so as a brand new account you can actually get $300 bill credit and that will be available for your account for the next three months so we're gonna activate it because we will be using some of the services so now we will activate our billing account which will give us this $300 credit So we click on the activate button you can see we're gonna get like ten dollar credit for free and this will be available for next 90 days so let's do that select country select the organization select others account type individual so I'm gonna put my address and the credit card information Okay, so after providing those information, it uh, says it is done. So it's asking for some question. I don't need this information now. So yeah, we got our ten dollar bill credit. So if you go to the billing here 
you will see you have the credit here for 91 days. Okay, so now we will activate some of our services what we're going to use. We'll open the side menu and remove all the existing pinned and we'll expand it. We're going to need cloud storage. We're going to need cloud build artifact registry data flow okay so let's activate all of them one by one let's go to data flow so by default I believe data flow is activated but we also have to activate the data flow api so for that we have to go to the api and services and enable api services and here we click on the enable api and services and here we search data flow api And this is the first one, and we enable it. So while this thing is getting enabled, we're gonna go to our other services like cloud storage, and inside the cloud storage, cloud is already enabled, but we're gonna create a new bucket here. So this is the bucket creation button and then we want to name it cross cut data. We're gonna leave others as is. Default, everything should be default. Let's keep everything default. So the bucket got created. So we'll use this bucket to, to actually store and run all the config for the pipeline. Let's take the next one, which is cloud build. So we also have to enable the cloud build API. this is going to be used when we will build our pipeline so while this thing is getting enabled we can go to the next one which is the artifact registry so we can also enable the artifact registry api there you go it got enabled so now we're going to create a repository in the artifact this is where all of our images will be saved so we're going to call create a new repository and this would be a docker repository i'm going to call it crosscut data dash repo and leave everything else as is standard region and for the region you can i'm just going to choose like your central one and everything else is as is let's click on update button and there you go it got created okay so all of the required services got enabled and configured now we will install gcloud cli gcloud cli is a software which will help us to communicate from our local machine to gcp it will help us to build the template and 
also to run the template. So let's do it. So I'll share the link of this repository where we have all the useful link is there. So the gcloud CLA instruction link is also here. You can just copy the link and open a new tab. And then here as I'm working on the Windows one, so I'm going to grab the gcloud CLA installer. Which I've got downloaded. I'll open it and run it. Next, agree, install. It will take some time to finish the installation. Okay, so after a while it got finished. So now we're gonna click the next and just click on finish. And this window got open on a separate monitor. I just grab it here. So I had uh, I had another account set up. That's why it's showing. But for your case, it should be uh, it's gonna ask. It will have only one option: create a new configuration. And that's what I'm gonna select now. I'm gonna select two. Okay, so now we're going to put a name for the configuration. Let's call it cost cut data. Choose the account. So I'm going to log in with the new account. So I'm going to choose four. And while I did that, it opened now we're gonna copy this link select it and control C then on a new tab we'll just paste it and then here we have our GCP at the Proscar data account we'll select it and then we'll give access that's it we got authenticated with our account. So now if we open this one, so this is big cloud project. So it's asking to actually pick a project. We can uh, pick one, but we're going to create a new project. Okay, so now it's asking to actually uh, to pick a project or we can create a new project. So we're going to create a new project, which is number two. And then we're going to give it an ID. I'm going to call it crosscut data dash gcp doesn't exist but yes and there you go we have gcloud set on our next lecture we will go through the code base what i have built to run in GCP. Thank you. Welcome to the third video of the Apache BIM series. In this video, we will have a deep dive into the source code, what we will use to build the pipeline. So earlier we have installed some softwares. So among them, one of them is GitHub Desktop. So GitHub Desktop is a very nice tool what you can use to clone and manage your repository. So as a part of our first step, we will actually clone this repository into our local machine. So I have already installed GitHub Desktop. I'm going to open GitHub Desktop. So what we need, we need the repository URL, but we can get it from here. We'll copy the URL. Open the GitHub desktop, click on File and Clone Repository, and we will go to the URL section. We paste the URL, which is this one, and then you can choose your 
path here so i put it over here and then i click on the clone button and there you go get cloned into my local repository so if i open the folder it's actually under my code cross code data and this is the folder so i got the whole code base over here nice so now as we have downloaded the repository it's time to have a look on the source code so for that we're gonna use an id so i have already installed eclipse in my local machine i'm gonna open it so while you click on the eclipse it will ask to actually pick a workspace i have big workspace so i'm gonna launch it i have actually two monitors it's actually opening in the other monitor i'll grab it from there so there you go eclipse got opened so Eclipse has a project explorer, which has several options. We're going to use the import project. And then from here, from the list, you will see there is option for Maven. Because this is a Maven project, we'll expand it. And then we'll click existing Maven project. We'll click next. And then we will browse and show the repository where we download it so this is the root folder we'll just show it because we have the palm file inside here it's not showing here so we'll select folder and then it fetch the palm file and then you click the finish and then it will you can see it will start actually grabbing all the dependency from online and uh, eventually when it will reach 100 percent you will see all the source code over here nice so the import is done. Now we can expand the source code and have a look how is it looks like. Okay, so before going through the source code, I want to discuss a little bit about how we're gonna manage the source code. So for that, we're gonna check our repository. So this is the main branch that's actually showing over here. So how I'm going to actually manage the course, I will actually create a feature branch for all of our important milestone. So in that way, you can actually grab the feature branch, what you want to actually see, and then slowly move to the next feature branch. In this way, you won't be overwhelmed by the amount of code, and you will see the transition of the code. So for that, we're going to switch to the uh, feature branch from our main branch. So to do that, we're going to actually open our github desktop and you can see here is showing the current main branch we'll click on that and then it is showing the other branches available so we're going to click on the feature branch and to make sure like it's up to date you can just click on that fetch origin so it will grab the code from the uh, remote branch to the local branch and that will reflect in our id as well so if we go to the id then it will automatically show the branch name here as well so right now it's showing main so if you just right click and do the refresh so, so it got updated with the branch name as well okay so now we will have a look on the source codes so what i try to do i try to make this repository very simple the goal is to just create a pipeline which reads from cloud storage and writes into cloud storage. So for that, we're going to go through basically three files. So we have three files in total. One is the options.java, the other one is streaming pipeline.java, and the other one is the pom.xml. So as you know, like uh, this is a Maven f uh, project. So we're going to start with the POM file and then we will go to the other files. So let's open the Maven file, which is the POM.xml. So I try to keep the Maven file very simple and clean. I have seen other tutorials where they don't care about the Maven file. They try to keep adding lots of dependence and other stuff, which is not being used by the project. I have, a I have an allergy with this kind of project actually. So I, I try to make it very lean. Uh, so let's go through the file 
So you can see like uh, the Maven project, uh, the Maven file has a group ID which is common cross cross cut data. As artifact ID, we're gonna call it streaming. We have a version number and there's a jar. We have a property, I'll come back to here this one later. And you will see like in the dependency section, we have only three dependency. The first one is actually the Beam SDK Java core, which is the uh, core Beam uh, dependency. And then the second one is for actually the data flow. So we, we are gonna use the Beam SDK Java IO Google Cloud Platform. So this is actually uh, the library for the GCP for Beam. That's what's gonna be required. And the third one is actually specific to the data flow. So that's the, this, this, this is the generic one and this is actually specifically for, for the data flow runner. So we're gonna actually, uh, this will actually help us to run the application into the you know, data flow of GCP. And you can see we have, uh, we have a property which is a beam version, which is actually 2.45.0. That's the version number for the beam that we're gonna use. So that's the dependency and if we go to the build section, so you will see that is the only section. I don't have anything else. And in the build section, we're going to use three plugin. One is the Maven compiler plugin. And then there's the Maven shared plugin. And the third one is actually the Maven execute execution plugin. So I believe you are actually familiar with the uh, with with Maven Ezek and the compiler plugin, this is actually very common in all all Java project. And here we have defined the Java version number. So we are going to use Java 11. And then we have this Maven Shade plugin. So this is being used to actually build a fat jar that will be used to build that Docker image. Finally, so yeah, that is all like the Maven look like. So now we will have a look on our streaming pipeline Java class so let's open it okay uh, so at the beginning of the streaming pipeline class we see there is a method called main this is a very common for java uh, classes so we're going to execute this this method so we initialize this options variable from this option interface so let's open this thing by control clicking on this link and you can see this is actually extending the data flow pipeline options. This is really important because the data flow pipeline options will set up all of our other required parameter setting for us. We don't have to worry about anything. So after defining the options, we have to create a pipeline, which is we are creating from the options. So this is the pipeline, what we, we are initializing the pipeline. And then we are going to do p.apply here to read this read from a GCS bucket. So this is a public bucket, Apache Beam sample. And then we're gonna read this thing from a public bucket and then we will write into our own bucket in a file. So we're gonna update this bucket name. So for that we have to go to our GCP console. But before going there, if we open our gcloud CLI, you remember like uh, we actually define uh, our application is going to run on this project. So we have to create this project actually. So let's go back to our our console and here you can see this is select taking a wrong project. So we're going to create a new project and then we're going to call it crosscut data GCP. So the ID is also same. This ID is important then because this is how we're going to recognize. So let's create it. So this will create a project for us. Okay, I think the project got created. Let's switch to that project, Crosscut Data GCP. And then we will actually create a new bucket here. And we're gonna call it Crosscut Data. Continue. So this bucket name is already taken. Let's call it bucket. We'll keep others as is and we'll create one. There you go. So we created this bucket. So we will use this bucket name. Let's copy it and go back to our source code and 
update this one so this is going to be our bucket name crosscut data bucket data flow and just let's save it so this would be the file name where we, we're going to write it and then over here so after this thing is setup is done then we will run the pipeline and that is the part where we done it so yeah that is all about the source code in our next video we will build a template from this source code and run the pipeline into gcp thank you welcome to the fourth video of the apache bim series in this video we will build a template from the source code what we have seen on our last video and deploy that template into data flow in the google cloud platform so as a first step we will authenticate to our G Cloud CLI with the Google Cloud Platform. So for that, we need a command prompt. And the thing is that we will actually switch the command prompt location to the root folder of our source code. So the easiest way is to do basically, if you open the Explorer and then go to the root folder, which is this one, and click on that and just type cmd press enter so the command prompt which will open it will actually have this folder as your root so here we will do gcloud auth login and then it will show you a link we're gonna actually copy that path and in our browser We'll paste it and as we have actually used this account earlier we're going to use the same account so let's click on that and give allow it's so nice so now if we open that command prompt then it says yeah we're open so it says now you're now logged in so your current project is crosscut data gcp that's what we're going to work on Okay, now let's have a closer look into the command what we're going to use to build and deploy the template. So at first we are going to build a project. You know this is a Maven project. So we're going to do Maven clean install which will create our fat jar. And then we will actually create the template using this command. So I'm going to explain what this command looks like. Let's open it into a text editor. So you can see this is a gcloud data flow command and we're going to use flex template to build the template. Okay, so now let's go through the parameters one by one. So to make it easy, I'm going to make it each of them separate line. Yeah, so the first one is actually the location of the template where it will be created. The second one is actually the image GCR path, which is going to be the path of our artifact registry. So earlier we have enabled the artifact registry. So uh, when this command will be done, we will have a Docker image created into this path actually. And then we are telling this is a Java SDK uh, language is, is Java. Uh, and then the base image is Java 11. And this is this jar. This is actually this is going to be at the path of our local uh, local uh, folder. Uh, so we will update this thing and the environment class. So this is the main class. So in our code, we define like in which class contain the main method. Okay, so let's update this thing and run this command in our gcloud CLI. Okay, so the first one is the bucket. So let's get back to our G, uh, Google console and this is the name of our bucket right so we copy this thing and we paste it here and we maybe want to create a folder here so we call it like maybe uh, templates so all of the template will it's going to create under this folder Let's copy this link and then update it. There's gonna be bucket named in the template, and then this path of the GCR artifact 
okay so now we will switch to the artifact registry and here we will create a new repository let's call it crosscut data repo and it's going to be a docker repository standard everything else is going to be same let's just do us hist one and create one okay so the repository got created now we're going to get inside the repository and from here we will copy the repository url and go back to our editor and update this thing so this is gonna be the so you can see this is the name of the server and then there's like a this the name of the project that's the repository name and then this is that uh, this is gonna be the uh, artifact everything is same and then last one we have to change the jar file location so this part we have to change so the easiest way is to basically go over here and then if we go to our folder so it had the target folder but it doesn't have the jar file so before doing that we can actually build it so we are right now in the root folder and the maven clean install so if you were doing it for the first time then it will take some time because it it has to uh, grab some dependency from online so let's be patient okay so the build is done so which created this fat jar for us so we will just grab the path this is gonna be our path copy the whole thing go back here and just update this whole thing so yeah i think we have done all the changes now let's put it back in one line okay so now let's copy this command and just run it here so you will see there will be some steps so it will create the docker image and push it into the artifact registry and along with that it will also create the template so while doing the build it is actually asking to enable the cloud build api so we have to do this thing as well so we'll enable it okay so the build has completed so now let's have a look on the what is the output so in the storage cloud bucket we have this template folder there you go so it got created this new template here right and if we go to our artifact registry we have this repository and we got a new artifact here which is the data flow and it has the latest tag this is the one that we will run okay so let's have a look on our next command which is the flex template run so we'll copy this command and open it in the editor so as you can see this is a flex template run and then we put a name for that pipeline and we just define the location of that template what we just built on our previous step which is here we copy it and then we paste it here so before running this command we have to make sure our data flow api is enabled or not so for that we will go to our console we'll go back here and open api and services enable api and services data flow api this one this one looks like it's not enabled so we will enable it okay so the data flow api is being enabled so now let's get back to our command copy it open the cli and paste it 
Nice. So the command is being run. So now <coughs> we're gonna go to the data flow cons page and see it has started. It's on queue. If you go inside there, you won't see the graph yet, but it will actually show eventually. Okay, so the pipeline successfully ran. As you can see, the graph is showing here. We have the read operation and the write operation, and this is, looks good. So now, the moment of truth. So if we go to cloud storage, and then we have the bucket here, where we have this folder, which is supposed to be created, and this is our file. So let's click on that and if you click on that again it will open in a browser and there you go the file got downloaded into our own bucket so this file got read from a public bucket and then it we inserted this thing into our own bucket in our next video we will add an additional step in between this read and write and that would be our transformation step which will help us to modify our input thank you welcome to the fifth video of the apache beam series in this video we will add a new step which is our transformation step and this step will help us to modify our incoming data so as a first step we will update our repository with the branch feature 1.1 textio read write transform write because this is the branch where we will see the updated code so let's open our github desktop and over here from the current branch we will switch from this branch to our new branch where we already have all the code so let's click on that and this one got switched for your case you might have to click some okay and other stuff the better way to actually click on the fetch origin which will make sure we have all the latest latest code there so good so now we have all the code here so if we want to see what are the changes that is being made from this branch from the previous one the easiest way is to actually create a preview pull request and then if you click on that it will open it over here and then you can select our previous branch over here so this will show all the changes what is being done so i did some refactoring that is not important but the main changes are actually there is in the pom file i update the version number i change the name of the artifact which is not that important uh, i added i refactored the uh, options class name from options to text io option this is uh, not so important uh, this one I added a new step is called transformation we will go through this thing and then in our main pipeline which was earlier called a streaming pipeline I renamed this thing to textile pipeline we added a new step that we will go through actually so cool let's open the ID and go through the code So as you can see, we have those two steps are there. The first step, we, we're calling it extract. The last step is we're gonna need load. And now we introduce a new step, which we're calling transform. So as I found the first step, we're reading it from that public uh, bucket. And this is gonna be converted into a P collection of a string so p collection is kind of like a, you can consider this thing as a list so basically it's, it's, it's going to hold a list of a string where is going to be each line so each so from this file each line is going to be actually stored in a p collection of string so kind of a list of a string right and then after we got this one we actually on top of that we we call our next step and on that we are actually calling a pardo operation and we are actually initiating another class we'll go what's happening inside the class and this one this one will also give an output which is a p collection string but this is this will do some transformation and let's have a look on that so power do of off takes actually a do 
do fn do fn it takes a do fn uh, so you can actually check apache beams uh, uh, documentation to get more idea about do fn uh, so i'll go inside this class which is transformation so transformation is actually extending do fn and is taking a string and it will return a string so this is important so it can it will take string and it will return a, an string as well so when you actually extend do fn basically you have to uh, overwrite a process element this this actually this method this method will actually do all the processing so here you can see when you are overriding this 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 method it actually takes a process context c this one contains the data actually so you can see c dot element so by calling c dot element we are getting that line that whole string line and what we're doing here we are actually converting that line into uppercase so whatever the content it will all of the character will be uppercase and then we are saving it into the line again and then here this c dot output and then we are passing this updated line over here so what's happening we're getting this line then we're making it uppercase and then we're sending it back so the c output we will actually send it back so this is also a string and that we will get back over here as a p collection of a string so all of the line got actually uppercase right and then we will save this thing which is the transform data so we're applying on uh, applying on the transform data again and we're writing this file into our into a file called transformed output.txt so that is how we are adding a new step to update our input and then we're saving it now we will build and deploy this template into gcp and then see how it works so to build and deploy as usual we will at first open and command prompt and do authentication to our gcloud by typing gcloud auth login and this will give us this url what we're gonna copy and open our browser paste it and then we'll sign in and allow it you might not need to do it all the time but if you are restarting your laptop then yeah this is the mentor step so cool so we are now logged in now we have to build our project so we are in the root folder so we build uh, we have all of our code saved now we do maven clean install this will build the whole project okay so the maven build is done and as it has done successfully it should have created a jar file let's have a look inside the yes in the target directory we have the pipeline dot one dot one dot zero so we updated the version number to one one dot zero that's why it got updated and we also update the artifact id so that's why the whole name got changed so now we're gonna actually run the build command for the template so i have actually copied it this thing earlier over here so the build command, build command is exactly same as we see this is a build command with the name of the template then the there is a path of the artifact which is also same this java is also same java 11 is our base image it's also same on the jar file the name of the uh, name of the jar got updated so I have updated this one so it's going to be pipeline 1.1.0 and uh, the main class got also changed because we have defected the code so i updated the path of the main class so cool so now we're going to copy this thing and go to our console and paste it and run. okay so the build is done so as the build is done then we should see the artifact is there so let's open our gcloud console and let's check it cool so it says it just got created so we're good so now we're gonna actually run our template so let's go back to here so as usual we're gonna actually use the flex template to run our uh, on the template what we just created we're gonna copy this thing 
and then open our console paste it let's see so the command got executed now if we go to the console and go to data flow jobs so this one got queued it's called data pipeline if you open that then when this thing is done then we will see the graph actually okay so the pipeline ran and as you can see it got successful we have an extract which actually got processed like 5525 elements it does the same amount of transformation and it also load everything on the output file so let's have a look on our storage bucket so we have this bucket and inside the data flow so this was our previous output or if you remember so this was basically just copying it from the source and putting in putting in, in into the destination so this is actually the exactly same file as the source so if we have a look on this file this file you can see it has a mix of capital letter and small letter everything is here okay so now if we go back to our folder so this is our transform output so now if we open this then we can see all of our text is capitalized everything so it got properly transformed so that's the end of this video thank you welcome to the sixth video of the apache bim series in this video we will learn how to handle exception in our apache bim code so as usual we will open our github desktop and switch to the branch for this lecture which would be 1.2 text io read transform write exception handling so we're going to switch it and then click on the fetch origin to make sure we have up to date code so after updating the branch we will check what kind of change is being made for this branch to do that we're going to use the preview pull request feature of github desktop let's click on that and to compare it we're going to pick our previous branch which is feature 1.1 and this will show there are some change in the readme file which is not important in the palm file we update the version number and we did some change on this two file the text io pipeline file is our main file so we did some change on our extract part we did some change on our transform part and the load part is same but there is some actually new step is being added and in our transformation class the there is some change in the logic so we will go through this thing so let's open our id and update the code and then let's go through the code so in our id we can see we our source code is up to date with the latest branch but just to make sure we will do two process one is the refresh this code base you can see it's updating another one is actually right click and maven and update project and click on the force update and snapshot this will also update all of our dependency if there is any new dependency being added so cool it's up to date so now let's go to our text io pipeline which is this file okay so on the extract step we can see our file got changed so we're going to have a look on our file and we will actually figure out what we're trying to do so we have our file in our desktop but we have to upload this file into our console so let's open our cloud storage go to the bucket and so the bucket we have the crosscut data bucket and we have a data flow folder this is the place where we're going to upload it but we have to change our path as well so let's copy this path and update the name and this is the file we're gonna upload which is actually in the desktop 
let's rename it to xylo.csv and upload this thing over here nice this is the file got uploaded so now let's have a look on our file which is in the desktop I'm gonna open it in sublime text okay so let's have a look on the file itself so the file is a list of houses information so we can see there are like 20 houses here so the first column is for the index second column is for the square feet size of the house third column is the number of bed fourth column is the number of bath fifth column is the postal code for that house and the sixth column is the year it was built and the last one is actually the price of the house so our goal is to actually go through each of this line and calculate the uh, the price per square feet for each house but we can see for some of the houses there is like unknown square feet so as this is an unknown so this is this is gonna if we try to divide the price with the square feet it should some throw some error right so we're gonna handle this error we're gonna handle this unknown error because we're gonna actually try we'll try to cast it and it will throw some exception and we will actually put this log for this three row in, into a different file so we will see how can we do it in the code actually so let's go to our code okay so in the code we can see in the first part we are loading the file that xyla.csv and then the second part over here in the transform step we can see we are using a p collection tuple so earlier we used to use p collection but here we are not using p collection anymore so we are using p collection tuple uh, so you can consider p collection as a list but uh, p collection tuple you can consider it as a map so what is happening so we are calling this uh, same thing the transformation class and we are actually passing to tag the first tag is called, we're calling we're calling valid tag and this is actually a it's a tuple tag it's a part of this transformation class so if we go inside this class by doing a control click we'll see we have defined two tag here valid data tag and failure data tag and these are these are a tuple tag uh, so you can add more tags but we're going to use the valid data tag as our valid valid data and the failure data tag as our the, uh, the data which got failed so now let's get back to that class so here you can see this is the first parameter with output tag and we are defining the first one as our uh, valid data set and the second one this is a tuple tag list where we can actually pass multiple tag but in this case we're just sending failure so now let's see what's happening in our transformation class so inside the transformation class we have we are grabbing the every row and after that we're splitting it uh, from the comma so we have seen it like a, every line is separated by comma and then we are getting the square footage from the first uh, from the second element and then we're getting the price from the six plus one to the seventh element and then to, to calculate the price per square feet we're doing price divided by square feet cool and then we're putting uh, we're creating a method we're calling zip code so the four, fourth index the fifth item is the zip code house is cost this much per square feet and we're putting it into a log that we will see and then we are outputting this thing this message now we are we are adding a tag here so earlier we didn't do that so this tag is basically saying this is a valid data format so now we have a catch catch block here too so what's gonna happen so when there is an unknown so see like uh, this is the percent is actually is a, it's considering everything is integer right uh, as we have seen uh, but for this three three row is a string so when it will try to parse this item 
uh, and it's going to be a string, then it will throw an exception, and then it will be caught over here. And this is the place where we basically print zip code this thing, house size is unknown. And then we're putting it into the log and also putting it back in the output, but this time we're putting it at the failure tag, failure data tag. So in this way, I just show like two case, like uh, so we are, we're putting back uh, uh, this messages with two tag, but you can also have like multiple tag with with multiple clause. In this way, you can split your your whole thing, and this is gonna be a part of the P collection tuple, and we'll see how we're gonna read it back. So everything is gonna be saved in the P collection tuple, and as I mentioned earlier, P collection tuple is actually a kind of map. And this is how we actually get this thing back. So transformation is the uh, so uh, transform tuple dot get, and then we we pass this valid tag, and this actually give us a p collection. So when it's a p collection, uh, then we can put an apply right. But before that, we're doing a, we're setting a coder because we know this is a string type, so that we're setting the string coder. And then this is an another step where we basically uh, like saving that output into our xylo dash result file and in the same way we're gonna actually get the failure data tag so this is the another p collection which is actually tagged under with this tag so this will give us a p collection back and then set quarter the same thing but for this result set we're gonna actually unknown square fit data so this 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 pipe this step is gonna write it to a different file so the so we will have two two different file which contains the valid data and end of like unknown square fit data. So yeah, rest of the parts are same. Now we will actually try to build and deploy it and see the result. So before doing the build, we have to make sure some of the things are correct, like the bucket name. So we will update the bucket name for all the places where we have mentioned it. That's good. And now we will go to our repository. And copy this to command into a file. And we'll update it. Okay, so we have updated the commands. Uh, so it has actually the updated template name, the jar file, the location of the main class. And now we will run it. So for running, we're gonna open a console and do the authentication at first. Cloud auth login. Mm, we will copy this link open it in the browser and select our account allow it wait so we are authenticated this is good so now we will switch to our folder so we can just open a cmd here and then we have to build the project command is maven clean install okay so the build is done now we will open our text editor to grab the command and then run it okay so the template build is done so now let's go to our artifact repository to make sure it is there so for there we will click on that artifact repository and click on the repositories it has this new repository that we created and the data flow and it says the latest build is being done one minute ago so we're good so now we will copy the next command which is the run command and run it So the command executed. So if we go back to our data flow, J 
jobs. And we see there is a pipeline got started. So we will see the graph eventually very soon. So the pipeline ran successfully. So we can see it actually extracted, it transformed it, and it actually uh, split the data into two parts. And uh, one is the error part, and another one is successful part. So if we click on each of the steps, we can see this step read 20 data, so transform also process 20 data, and it split the data into two different parts. One part is that it has three data, which is the failed data, and this part has actually 17 data, which is successful data. And it actually, it, it eventually, it should be writing this data into two different file. So if you want to see it, let's go to our storage in the crosscut data bucket and data flow. And here we have Xylo result and Xylo un unknown, unknown. So if I click on the result one, let's open it and we can see all of the data is, is being written properly. So we have the price per square feet for all of these houses is written over here. And if we go back to the other file, which is the unknown file, and this one actually has the zip code has size is unknown for all of these three. So yeah, so it perfectly worked. So that is how you actually can handle it. Uh, so just want to add one thing real quick. So basically, so we uh, write the code to split two different things, but here you can actually split it into multiple branch actually based on your business logic. So in our case, we just added uh, two clause in our transform section, which is we had a try block. If there's any exception, then we catch it. But you can actually use efails logic to actually tag a specific data and then you can take action based on that. So yeah. That is uh, the end of this lecture. If you want to learn more about the Apache Beam, I have some other lectures uh, in this series. So you, you, you may want to go through those, those lectures to get some more idea. Thank you and see you in the next lecture. Welcome to the seventh video of our Apache Beam series. In this video, we will learn how to pass runtime parameter into our Apache Beam pipeline. So as usual, we'll open GitHub desktop and switch to our new branch, which is feature slash 1.3 text IO parameterized. And just to make sure the code is up to date, we will click on the fetch origin to make sure all the code is up to date. Okay, now it's here. So now we will have a quick look on the changes for this branch. So for, for that, we will click the preview pull request button and this will open this ui where we can compare between two branches so we will select 1.2 branch and this will show all the changes that's been made so far so we did some change in the readme file we added the runtime parameter part on the on the data flow run command in the POM file, we updated the version number. We added two, two new dependency that we will go through. And there is a text IO options. So we added a new, new parameter on the text IO option. Earlier it was blank. And in the text IO pipeline, we did some change. The changes are basically earlier we used to hard code all those file path. So now you can see this file parts are coming from a config that we will go through. And this config is being loaded from this options. And then we added some new classes, which is a model here. So we have the config, sync, source. And then there are like we added new two utils. These utils will help us to load some of this configuration that we will go through also and also we have a sample config json that we're gonna use to actually run our application so let's have a look on the source code 
So for having a look on the source code, we will open our ID, which is Eclipse. And we make sure our code is up to date. We do the refresh. And also do a Maven update project course update. This will make sure our project is properly built. You can see on the right side is being built. So now let's have a look on the code. So our main class is text IO pipeline. So what is our goal? So our goal is actually earlier we used to hard coded those three file path into the code, right? So now what we want to do, we want to make those things parameterized. So instead of hard coding those file path, so we want to actually get those file path from a config or like a, from a parameter. So the way we're going to do it is like uh, we're going to get those uh, parameter from text IO options. So if I open the text IO options, you can see I have a variable defined which is called get config path. Now the question is that we could have done it in another way, which is actually we can actually have three variables here. Like we need uh, one for input and two for output. So we can just define three, three defined variable. And, and pass it as a three defined string parameter. But what I want to do, I want to make it a little bit complex so that you can get some more example. So I'm gonna read a file actually, and inside the file, I will define the whole config as a JSON object. And that I will read, and then it will be loaded in a Java Pojo. So I have a sample JSON file here which I have stored under the source main resource folder. So let's have a look on that. So if I open the JSON file, which is a sample one, this is actually <coughs> in a, it has a JSON file and it has two block. One is called source, another one is called sync. So under the source, I have input file path where I have defined the uh, path what we earlier hard coded. So it's defined over here. And for the sync, I have these two path successful output file path and failed output file path and this is also defined over here and what we're gonna do we're gonna store this file this JSON file into a Google storage bucket and then we will define the storage buckets path as a part of our parameter and we will actually make our application read the, this, this JSON object from that file and that convert this whole thing into a POJO so that we can actually read those information from the POJO and use it while we are configuring the whole application. So let's see how we have done it. So let's go back to our text IO pipeline. And as you, as you can see in the first part we are reading the pipeline options and as we have seen in the pipeline options we have added one new variable which is the config path so this is the part where we will actually pass the config paths variable the path variable which is the path of, of our GC, uh, gcs bucket and then this is the same code where we create the pipeline and here you can see we are loading a config object. So let's have a look on the config object at first. So config object is a simple simple Java POJO. So if you open that, it actually has two other objects as an attribute. It's a source and a sync. Uh, and inside the source, so if we go to the source object, we have one variable which is called input file path. If we go back, and if you go to the sync, you will see we have two new variables which is going to contain those file uh, information. So now there's an interesting thing is that none of this uh, classes has a setter getter, but it actually has. So I'm actually using a library which is called project Lombok that I have shown earlier in the pom file we have added a new dependency. 
which is this one lombok and this dependency is actually helping us to auto generate those data and setter method so if i go back to the code so i have added these three new annotation so which which is actually helping me to create some constructor and data setter i won't go in detail if you are interested you can go and and uh, check out the project lumber website it has actually more detail but this will actually automatically uh, create the like, setter getter and constructor for these classes cool so this will hold the whole, whole config object basically what's going to happen this this uh, that pojo will be loaded by this information so now let's have a look how this thing is being loaded so let's go back to our pipeline and we have a config util that we have written and it is a load config and we are passing the options dot get config path so we are just passing a config path which is a gcs gcs bucket uh, gcs files pa file path so if we go to the load config so we can see this is the path that we are passing and here we are actually splitting the path by the colon so the way we're gonna pass the path is actually we're gonna send three part of the path so the first part is uh, is the project id of the google uh, cloud platform and the second part is gonna be the bucket name and the third part is gonna be the path of that file itself including the folder whatever is, is there and then after we actually split it into an array so this has a config path array which has this three part first one project id second one bucket third one path then we are gonna pass this thing into this storage util utility class that that is what we also built and this has a method called read file as a string from gcs and we are passing the project id bucket and the file path and we are loading this thing in a temporary file over on this path so let's have a look on this method again so here we have we have some log we have these three variable project id bucket file path and the temp path that we're passing and here we are using a utility from google cloud storage so this is the another dependency that we're using so if we go back to the pom file again so above this one you can see we added a new dependency for the google cloud storage so this dependency will help us to read from the storage bucket so that's what we're using so this is actually this is a method what what actually at first it set up the environment with the project and uh, id and some credentials and then we actually read a blob from that specific path which is defined over here in the bucket and this is the blob actually which is the, that file right and then from the blob dot get content it gives us the entire content the string and then we convert into a string and returning it as a string so this is how we are reading that file and sending back the file content as a string so back to our previous file which is the config util so config util is getting a string here and then we are using the object mapper of of jackson so i believe you have used it in different project and this string is being mapped by the config class what we have this what we created earlier and that is being mapped and stored it as a config object and then we are sending back that config object so this is how we are loading the config object so now get back let's get back to our text io pipeline which is this one and we have loaded the config object and then that's the part is very simple so earlier we used to pass the the hard-coded string so now we are reading those information from the config object because we have loaded it here so config dot get source dot get input path this is where the input path is there and also here we used to 
pass the hard coded string now here we are reading it from the config path uh, sorry for the config object and again this is the third one so this is how we are making the whole thing parameterized and now uh, we will run the application and see that this thing is working so as usual we'll build our application and run it and to do that we will actually open our console and the way would, that we will do is we will open this path in the file explorer and then type cmd it will open a common prompt with that same path and then here we will do the build first which is maven clean install this will build the application so our build is done and it has done building successfully so the next part is going to be we will do the authentication so for that g cloud auth login so we got our link here what we're going to copy and open it in our browser and we will sign in with our account and then click on allow and our console is now authenticated so now we will build our template so we have our template building command which is this one if we have a look on that it's using flex template build and we have the path for the template we have our image this is where the image will be created the language is java it's java 11 and this is our path for the look look or local jar file where it got created by using our maven cleanest command and this is the environment this is our main class so that's same as before so there is no change we will see there is some change in the run command awesome so the template build is done so now to verify that we will go to the cloud console open our artifact registry open our repository this one and see this latest tag this image just got created so that means we're good so now we will actually run the template so as i mentioned earlier we got some change in the run command so you can see the first part is same we are do, uh, running a flex template run and we're naming it data pipeline and the template is defined what is defined in the previous part same part and this is the extra part which is this dash dash parameter and dash dash parameter we are we are actually uh, we're telling there is a, a parameter and the name is config path right that's the name in in our in, in our parameter and the config path has this whole new string and this string is divided by this colon and the first part is the name is the project id second part is the bucket name and the third part is the path of that file where we're located so before running this command you have to make sure you have uploaded this file into this path so for that you have to go to the cloud storage bucket so i have already uploaded this file i'll show you the location so crosscut data bucket this is my bucket and then i created a folder called config here and inside the config i uploaded this file in config 1.3.0 so you can just drag and drag and drop it over here it will automatically create it or you can just use those options this upload file upload folder whatever it's pretty easy and if you click on that and then click again on this file you will see the whole content so this is what i have uploaded this file so nice so now let's get back to the part and then hit enter now it will 
run this command so it has already done it so now let's go back to our console open the data flow jobs and you can see there's one pipeline has been queued if we go inside there so it's spinning up when it will spin up we can we will see the DAG over here so the pipeline ran successfully and you can see the DAG is showing over here and all of the boxes are green so it's the same pipeline same code it but it just parameterized so the output should be same as well like the previous one so if you click on the box you can see the 20 day code has been loaded and the transform session also has 20 and out of that 70 will be a, a successful record is going to be here and then rest three would be unknown square feet data as a three so exact same thing it is good and if we go to our storage bucket and it's into the storage bucket in the uh, under the data flow folder we should see this files it does got created this two file is a result and one more it has got created so these are the new two file which contains that result now let's open one to make sure it is good so yeah the data is here and that is the end of this lecture if you want to know more about the apache beam i have some other lectures you may want to go through those lectures to get some more idea about how to use apache bim with java and dataflow and you will get some more in-depth knowledge that's it for now see you in the next lecture thank you